Hey friends, welcome back. My name's Maggie and the only thing I love more than makeup is appreciating makeup palettes. You've seen on my channel, like I did my makeup inventory fairly recently-ish. I'll leave that linked up above. I have a lot of eyeshadow palettes and if I buy every single eyeshadow palette that ever appealed to me, I would have even more. So while I do have quite a large collection, I do try to keep it somewhat controlled and neatly put together. That said, there are some palettes that just live in my head rent-free. There are some brands that I think just do a beautiful job. So in today's video, I'm going to be highlighting those brands and the palettes from them that I just love. I may end up picking up a palette from them someday, but for now, I'm just sort of lusting after them, appreciating them, liking how well everything has been done so far, and I mean, if you've tried any of these palettes, you can let me know if they're worth my time or not. So if you like these kind of videos, feel free to subscribe. I put out new videos every single week. Let's dive on in. Okay, so the first brand on my list is BH Cosmetics, specifically their 16 pan palettes. Some of these are related to the cities or places that they've done palettes about, but also palettes like Blueberry Muffin. I think that's a beautiful palette. It's definitely pulled me in and I've almost purchase it quite a few times because Ulta has it on sale every now and again. I think it's gorgeous. I love the mix of blue with neutral, all the pretty shimmers in there. And then we have palettes like Smitten in Switzerland, which is just a fun, grungy, rainbow-ish palette. I don't think I'll ever buy that just because I look at the Raw Beauty Christie at Forest Sight palette and I'm like, Maggie, you have these shades over and over again. But there are palettes like Passion in Paris and Trendy in Tokyo that I think are just so pretty. I love the mix of the mattes with the shimmers. I love how many different looks you could turn out with it. And I think Passion in Paris definitely because Paris was my first city that I visited outside the continent. Like I took a transatlantic flight and it was my first time just like doing that basically. It was a little bit out of my comfort zone and I just look back on that trip so fondly. So naturally, I, mean, I think that's what BH is doing. <laughs> if you've been to those cities and you have fond memories, BH Cosmetics is like, wanna buy the palette? And they're right, I do. Good job. Next brand is Nabla. I think Nabla just does such amazing color stories. The one that I want the most is the one that they, of course, discontinued. Mia of Mia's Virtual Vanity features this palette on her channel all the time. She even says, like, sorry, this has been discontinued. I'm like, that still makes me want it. In fact, that makes me want it more. I love the pastel dreaminess going on. I love the lighter shimmers. I think they're so pretty. But let's also talk about palettes that they do have. The side-by-side -side palette is, I think, a beautiful neutral palette. I see this a lot at one of my Ulta's because I do live near an Ulta that has a small selection of Nabla palettes. And I think it's beautiful. If you're looking for a nice staple neutral palette, this would probably be perfect, but I have so many neutral palettes, I really don't need another. The Dreamy 2 palette I also thought was pretty cute. It's kind of a wintry, deeper spin on a neutral palette, and I quite like that. I like those deep, rich shimmers. I just, it kind of reminds me of my Sydney Grace shimmers, honestly. The ones that I love the most are very rich, very pigmented, swatch beautifully, so I think that's why I like it so much. And then the Cutie palettes, I really am drawn to both the Coral Cutie palette and the Wild Berry. I think part of it is that it's compact. I like the six pans. I like how they're laid out. I think you've got a good mix of matte and shimmer. You can do quite a few looks with the small number of shadows that you're given. Some of the shimmers are duochromes. So as someone who loves duochromes, they're, they're calling my name. And they are the kind of fun, corally berry colors that I really like. So those two, oh, I was so close. I think during a 21 Days of Beauty sale, they were marked significantly down and I almost bought it. Props to me for resisting that. I'm, I'm proud of myself. Another brand that I've mentioned quite a bit on this channel is Kyla, formerly Muse Beauty. Part of it is that I do love the impressionist art style and that's one that they tend to focus on. But I love their palette takes on artistic movements or paintings or anything like that. I think they're so pretty. The one that calls to my heart the most is the Van Gogh palette. 
I think for nine pans, they did such a great job. They're definitely colors that I reach for a lot. And honestly, I'd probably get a lot of use out of this palette. But again, I have that palette a hundred times over. I have those shades a hundred times over. I also really like their remastered version of the Le Jardin palette. I love the pastel kind of take. I think that despite it being a more lighter palette, there is a lot you could do with it. And then their more recent palettes like the Honoré, Triumph of Venus, Rococo. There's always something that makes it, I guess, a cohesive look, but still being a little different, a little special. And I like that. I think the team behind Kylab, they really know what they're doing. I feel like they all, they've got to have like master's degrees in art history or something because they are just nailing it. Like the art movements, the paintings, like the palettes just reflect it so well. I'm so inspired by this brand. This next brand kind of frustrates me because I feel like they make their best palettes limited edition, and that is Beauty Bay. <laughs> their most beautiful palettes, uh, the Book of Magic, the Wilderness palette, and the more recent one, the Age of Opulence, those are all limited edition. Why? They're so pretty. It's got to be a marketing strategy because they keep doing it, so clearly it's working for them, but these are so pretty. I love the layouts. I love how there's a good mix of matte and shimmers. I love how there's always a very good theme going on. No color feels random. The layout and everything, it always pulls me in. I think they're just such beautiful palettes. The reason I haven't bought it is because while it is always such a great price, I don't really reach for large palettes all that often. I mean, the largest palettes in my collection currently are the Alter Ego palettes. So I don't know if buying a Beauty Bay palette would be like the smartest decision just because, you know, they're huge. To me at least. I know a lot of people like this is hardly the biggest palette in their collection, but for me it definitely would be. So that's why I sort of stand back, although I was very close to buying Book of Magic. I mean, look at it. So pretty. I've also really been enjoying Sigma's eyeshadow palettes. I think they do a very nice balance of their releases. They'll do some really beautiful neutral palettes and then they'll put out palettes that are a little bit out there and I quite like that balance. I think it reaches, you know, both segments of their customers. I think that's very smart. The ones that I like, I thought the warm neutrals was beautiful. A deep rich take on neutral palettes. I love that. I love rich mattes and shimmers. I could wear those all day. And I mean, I'm kind of wearing that right now, a little bit. Uh, the Corday Rosa palette I thought was beautiful. Those are definitely the warmer colors that kind of call to me. I'm really not sick of those. <laughs> I know a lot of people are sick of, you know, these warmer, ready tones ever since Modern Renaissance came out. But me personally, I'm all for it. I say the more the merrier. I also, if I were to buy any Sigma palette, I would probably get the Enchanted palette. I think it would be the most unique to my collection while still being something that I would use. The shimmers look off the charts beautiful. I love the texture. I love how unique they are and how the shimmers play into the palette really nicely. And again, we do have some richer tones my calling card. I also really like the Untamed palette. I don't know that I would purchase that because again, I have those kind of grungy colors a thousand times over. And I thought the Ivy palette was also beautiful. It's a great take on a green palette, but make it neutral-ish. So maybe somebody who is wanting to dabble in green a little bit, but doesn't want to go with a ColourPop monochromatic palette, I think this is a good compromise. And I almost purchased it. Sigma, you're so close. Someday, man. They keep having 40% off sales, and I keep almost buying something. But like I said, I have so many palettes, I really do have to be very picky with what I purchase and it's difficult sometimes. I also wanted to give a shout out to an indie brand, Ace Beauté. Man, they put out the most beautiful color stories. The one that frequently calls to my heart is the Flare palette and I did a duping video with Catherine B Beauty. I'll link that up above if you're curious, but I really like it because I say this too often. It's a rainbow palette for people who don't like rainbow palettes. There, I'm done. Okay, moving on. Uh, Tropical Vibes, beautiful. I love the grungy tones in this palette. I love how every shade seems to have a different tone. It's not redundant even though it is a 
larger palette. I also like the Oceanic palette. I think if you're gonna do that kind of color story, you gotta commit, and they definitely did here. There's a lot you can do with seemingly just a blue-green palette. I think they did that very nicely. And then I think the Vintage John palette, again, similar to the Flare palette and why I really like it. If I were going to go for an Ace Butte palette, it would probably be Vintage Dawn. It's a bit smaller. It's definitely those colors that I reach for a lot, but again, I just, I have these colors over and over again. That's, that's the thing with having a large collection, you guys. You gotta be picky at a certain point, otherwise you'll have duplicates at the wazoo. So I need to wait for a color story that is unique, appeals to me, but given how great they are with creating color stories, I feel like it's only a matter of time. And finally, J Cat Beauty. This one is so tempting because not only are these palettes seven damn dollars, but they frequently go on sale. I have heard nothing but great things about um, these, what are they, 15 pan palettes? I know Andrea Mattigliano raves about them, and I have seen so many beautiful like swatches, like the shimmers are so foiled and intense, the mattes are very nice, so let's go through all of the palettes in the J-Cat Beauty realm that just make me want to buy them. The Once Upon a Time palette is, I think, a fun twist on the purpley pinky tones. They're a lot brighter. They're a lot more intense. I love this, but I don't think I'd reach for it that often. Uh, then there's the Around the Clock palette. Similar to the Oceanic palette, and again, I really like it. I like how all of the um, shadows seem to have a purpose. There's not a whole lot of redundancy there, and I mean, they swatch beautifully. Which is awesome because blue shadows are so difficult to formulate. So anytime a company can do it right, I'm always quite impressed. There's also, in these sh palettes, they look kind of similar, so I'm just going to throw them up side by side. The Dia and the Noche palette, beautiful takes on neutrals with a twist. How there are some greens, some blues, some purples, so you could mix that in with the neutral shades that are already there, create a really beautiful look. And then I did have to give a shout out. Now, I don't think that I would end up purchasing this palette. If I were to purchase anything, it would be either the Dia or the Noche palette, but the Peak Time palette, what a fun take on rainbow. It's so neon and so intense. I can appreciate it while knowing that it's not the palette for me. Palettes are so hard for me to resist because they're beautiful. They're $7 at the most and I've heard nothing but rave reviews. So anyways, folks, those are my picks for palettes that I love but won't purchase, at least not yet. We're admiring them from afar. These entire collections, I think, are just so beautiful, so well laid out. I have such an appreciation for those brands because even looking at these palettes, I get really inspired to shop my stash, and see what's already in my collection that I can use to replicate it. So I think there's some benefit to that. If you have tried any of these palettes, uh, feel free to let me know in the comments. Let me know what your thoughts are, whether or not you think they'd be a good fit for me. I would love to hear it. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!